Hello everyone and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. We are once again looking at creating a metadata driven processing framework for Azure Data Factory. This is a very special video, a very exciting video where I have with me, as you've probably noticed, uh, a guest on my channel today, uh, Dr. Richard Swimbank. Welcome to the channel. Um, we are going to be looking at testing. So um, let's dive straight into Visual Studio because what you probably will have noticed from the tagged uh, branch in the, the processing framework version 1.8.1, uh, we now have a, a new project in the solution, an NUnit project. And this is in here so we can automatically test or I can automatically test the processing framework code um, end to end um, using what we've got in here. Now, um, I basically did the noble thing of just adding the project to the solution. Um, and then Richard has helped me with a lot of the content that's actually gone into this project. So Richard, you want to um, introduce yourself to our audience and mm -hmm. then we can um, go into the, the tests and the things that we've got in here and, and why and, and why it's why it's all good. Will do. Thanks, Paul. Um, so as Paul said, um, my name is Richard Swinbank. I'm a data engineer working in the um, Microsoft um, data platform space. Um, I've been interested in uh, test automation for a little while, um, uh, not least because it's always struck me that that once you start testing something, it feels like you can't stop. So the volumes of tests that you have to, to run every time you make a change just goes up and up and up. So automating that is, is great because it means that it means that you can automatically run all of your tests and protect yourself against regression faults um, as you as you continue to add to your to your solution. Um, and then there are other things if you're in a if you're in a um, environment where you're developing things very quickly and, and iterating very quickly, then to be able to test automatically is really really a powerful tool in the uh, in the in the in the DevOps tool chain for that. Um, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of it about for, for data platforms. So T SQL T has been um, around for a little while for, for, for unit testing databases. If you're not familiar with that, really do have a look at it. It's really powerful, really useful. Um, but I've not seen anything for integration services, um, looking back at a sort of older data platform or, or indeed for, for Azure Data Factory. Um, Paul, your audience will probably know that that ADF supports um, a, a number of a number of um, APIs or provides a number of APIs, perhaps I should say, um, and includes a, a, a rich .NET API, which makes it a really natural fit for testing with NUnit. And so, basically, I've 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 brought that 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 I've brought together the ADF .NET libraries with your um, with with the NUnit uh, testing functionality to to provide some automated testing for ADF pipelines in general, and, and in this case, um, for your, your ADF Proc Framework pipelines in particular. Yeah, so I wanted that confidence that when I developed some code in the processing framework and uh, done that pull request and put it out there in the wilderness that I could just hit run effectively on these tests. And it meant that once I got some success flags, I knew that various scenarios um, had, had been completed and, and were working. So I hadn't broken anything between doing that, that work in the, the open source repo. Um, so we have a look at um, how I've applied this then with a, a very simple test that we've created for the grandparent pipeline um, and what's kind of gone into this and, and the structure of the code that's in here. Yeah, also, I guess I guess the most important thing in here, obviously, is is the is the test. Um, so you, you've got one test in here, I think, um, yeah. on line twenty four, um, which you can see is really it's a very simple test. It's just testing that the pipeline's outcome was succeeded, and that string, that succeeded string, is really the 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 the, the string value that you get back from ADF to say that a pipeline has succeeded. So that's a, a real test of a real ADF output, as it were. Um, you can see the test method is perhaps slightly weirdly named. Um, then power, pipeline outcome is succeeded. That's not how you would name methods if you were just sort of writing C sharp outside of a testing scenario. But this is this the, these methods and in fact all of the parts of this um, of this class are written very much with readability in mind um, to try and make it possible for you to to really understand what you're trying to test um, just by looking at the test code itself 
and in fact by extension that goes a bit further and tells you something about this this gives you some documentation around intent for your pipeline you know what are you actually trying to do with your pipeline because the test a natural language test for that will will help you document that which is really powerful yeah and and we've got that the the outcome should be um very and nice. again that's 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 uh, that's all about readability again so so i mean you'll probably hear me say readability quite a few times but that should be um functionality is some extension methods that come with this fluent assertions library that you've just picked out on uh, on on line one there and that that for me makes a really is a really powerful way to write natural language assertions that makes it really really possible to understand the the the, the intention of a test and, and and by extension as i say the extent the the intention of a code um so that you can so 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 that this really is readable yeah so Within this test class, we've got that one simple test that's looking at the, the outcome of the, the grandparent. Um, mm -hmm. But before we actually then run that test, we've got a, a one-time setup. So, so what's going off in here? So um, one-time setup, these, these, um, these method attributes, the one-time setup and the test attribute, those are, are end unit attributes. And so a one-time setup method is run um, before any of the tests in this class get run. You can see there's only one test here, but we could have lots. Um, there's only one in here. And so the one-time setup is run just before, be before all of the tests in the class are run, as I say. Um, what I'm actually doing in here is, is building the test scenario and then running the pipeline. And so you can see that the, the, there's this call to instantiate a, a helper, um, which uh, which has got a couple of chained method calls to, uh, to 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 methods like with empty table and with simple failure handling. These are all things which are around setting up what the scenario is going to do. But again, hopefully in this really really readable way. So actually, the the, the test fixture is quite compact, even though of course there's an amount of, of machinery underneath involved with talking to ADF and, and all of those other things. And then yeah. on line 19, after the help has been instantiated and the scenario has been created, you can see there's a call to run the pipeline. And in fact, that's exactly what we're doing here is, is this is under, under the bonnet, this is going away, making a call to the ADF API, running the pipeline, waiting for it to finish so that we can then assert against various properties of the pipeline's run. And in this case, as, as, as we saw with the test that you've got below, it's a really simple property of the pipeline's run. But you can, of course, you can, you can test all sorts of things in terms of, in terms of what the, the, the pipeline's effect was functionally, and indeed what the pipeline did internally in terms of activities, so something a bit closer to a unit test. Yeah, so um, in the case of my grandparent test, um, I've got some setup things that actually relate to the metadata database in this case, um, which is easy enough to do. But then, yeah, we are running the pipeline. Now, is that running against debug mode or, or does that have to be published? Um, it absolutely has to be published. Um, debug mode is, is something that's, that's only available to you um, sort of within the context of your ADF UX session. And so if you want to be able to, to, to test pipelines externally, you need to put them somewhere where, uh, where, where, where your test code can get to them. And when I say put them somewhere, literally all I mean is publish them to an ADF instance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely a, an interesting one that we, we have to have those pipelines uh, published or, or deployed um, and then we can do our testing. Okay, so we've got the setup, we've got the test, uh, we've then got a one-time teardown. Why is this helpful? So so one-time teardown is, is is basically sort of the, as you might guess, is the opposite of, of one-time setup. So one-time setup runs before any tests run and, and one-time teardown runs after all the, the tests in this in this class is run. And this is really just about tidying up, um, tidying up after ourselves after the tests have run or, um, or, or or potentially just releasing resources that you've that you've that you've invoked or created for the for the for the duration of the test. So, for example, you talked about us interacting with the the the, the database, the ADF Proc Framework database. Um, to do that, I've had to open a, a database connection. And so, a really simple thing that's going to happen inside the uh, inside the, the the teardown method is that that, that connection is going to be closed. But then, if you've made actual changes inside your database to set up your test scenario then here's here's the place where you could undo those changes so basically you leave the database in the state that you found it ready to pick up with your next test yeah so i mean in the case of this one then i i've said uh, with one worker pipeline enabled then actually in the teardown i'm we're saying then enable all worker pipelines again so we we know the processing framework in this case is back in the same state ready for the next test yeah yeah, absolutely. 
So all this readability and all these uh, funny named methods, um, what we then get via the, the test explorer panel in Visual Studio, as, as we can see, there's all that readability really comes into its own when we look at it in this sort of list form. Um, we look at all the other tests that we've got in here. Um, so if we pick on uh, maybe the, the next test that we've got um, for the, the parents, um, we can see that we've got all of the, the test outcomes as well. Um, yeah, so what you're, what you're looking at here, I mean, you've, you've, you've named your namespace, um, the, the, the factory testing pipeline's parent namespace makes it really clear that what you're talking about here is the, is the parent pipeline. Um, then the, the name of the test fixture, the name of the class is given dependency chain failure handling, which as I said before, feels like a strange name for a class. But when you look at how tests present themselves in Test Explorer here, it makes for a really readable uh, description of what your scenario is. And then all of the tests that belong to that scenario sit underneath in, in that sort of given then style description of, of, of tests. You're saying given that particular scenario, then these various things should be true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. It, it does really give me that confidence that uh, when the processing framework is released, we it does actually work for our, our lovely audience. So the, there's lots of good stuff in this project. Um, and obviously, this is geared up very much to how I've implemented it to, to test the processing framework. Um, if our audience wanted to have a look at doing this themselves, um, testing their own data factory, um, where should they go? What should they do? So this isn't a this isn't a sort of testing framework per se, if you like. It's just an approach to to, to writing tests for your your ADF pipelines. And so, um, if they were to look at the code um, as that you've got in your ADF proc framework solution that you've got there, they'd they'd have a good idea about how to how to go about building tests for ADF pipelines in general. But I've also um, got a series of blog posts available, which um, which actually sort of step through the construction of uh, of, of an automated test framework like this. So the First one you've got there in front of you um, is uh, just just sort of sets up a basic end unit project with a, a single class structure to 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 help you uh, uh, help you help you think about how you go about automating tests. But then goes on from that to look at things like um, uh, test isolation using dependency injection and various things like that, so that you can really start to exercise lots of scenarios around your pipelines and get some some of the sort of uh, benefits of testing that you'd, you'd expect to be able to get in a in in, in other automated test scenarios. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Okay, well, thank you, Richard, for, for your support with that. Um, thank you for being a, a guest on my YouTube channel, my first guest on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, thank you again for the contributions to the, the GitHub repo. Uh, we'll look forward to some more very soon. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you to our audience. Um, please subscribe and, and join us again very soon. Goodbye.